Hello? Hi, Carl, how are you? Oh, I'm kind of beat up, but I'm doing all right, I guess. What I want to tell you about, I've been talking with, with John Conley. And, mm -hmm. uh, fast flying, I don't mind telling you fast here now, but I, I'd come over here to John's office because he'd ask me to come by here. But okay. We are we running into a situation now that uh, could uh, create uh, complete havoc, uh, and that's this. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're in great shape now. We've, uh, we've solidified uh, everybody. We've even got uh, Alabama folks coming up and down and saying we've got a great platform, and uh, uh, I honestly believe that uh, better shape than we've ever been. But now, this idea that uh, has seemingly sort of uh, come forward about the possibility of this convention creating two delegates at large and seating this nigger from Mississippi and a white man from, Negros, uh, from Mississippi, recognizing, I don't care whether they say they pass a resolution and say there's no such thing as a freedom party, when they come along and recognize two members of this freedom crowd and give them the status of an official delegate to the convention on the basis that uh, they they uh, recognize their protest. Next time, our people have already said to me, next time uh, they could give uh, 22 people in Georgia or any other place, uh, uh, the Democratic Convention could, they could create 22 delegates at large and give them to somebody else on some other basis. And I'm what I'm afraid of, and this is the thing that uh, I wanted to be sure that uh, you understood. If they start seat two delegates, even though they try to disassociate them in the convention, uh, I honestly believe you're going to have a wholesale walkout from the South. And if it gets down to that point, because uh, I don't know what we're going to be able to do, because my position is uh, I'm for Lyndon Johnson, and I'm going to stay for Lyndon Johnson, and I'm for him for president. But I don't know whether I could sit in a convention they would turn around and seat some folks and name them delegates, give them the status of uh, delegates in a convention uh, without any legal right to do so. Now, I don't mind, I've talked to a lot of these uh, people, and hell, they can rope off a, a blue ribbon section for them right in the middle of the damn floor, as far as I'm concerned, and seat them all there and give them the status as honored guests to anything they want. But for God's sakes, if they make delegates out of them, it's going to just tear the thing up. We've got the South now solid, it looks like to me, and we understand George Wallace is going to get on our plane from Atlanta to come back up here because we ruined him in Alabama with the Alabama setup we worked out so far. And there's no way you can uh, pick up that telephone and talk to some of those critics. Carl, I thought this was, I have, I thought this would be the best thing that could happen. I don't see how it hurts anybody. From, it's got no connection to Mississippi. Mississippi's got every vote they ever had. Georgia's got every vote they ever had. We're not going to have any votes to begin with. This is a pure sop to two people sit over there that never cast a vote, so we don't have a brawl. I think we're going to have it anyway, because Rao is just raising hell about it. You know, you know what it looks like to the South, and I'm just I'm telling you because you want me to tell you the yeah, truth. It sure. looks like we're turning the, the Democratic Party over to the Negroes. I couldn't. Related right back to this damn freedom crowd and row, and when you make a delegate out of them, then you've gone out here and. Row and his freedom crowd are raising hell. It's, this just gives our leaders that that got those that got those serious problems uh, uh, excuse of some kind to not vote with them. Now, if we don't do this, the alternative is by God getting beat. Well, I'd rather get beat and I have uh, convention on the basis of fighting. <laughs> Well, I don't can't eat. I can't take a legal principle though and carry Chicago and New York and the places we got to carry. You see, you get out there and get a vote. Now, Buford Ellington just came in and said Bobby Kennedy's going to make speech uh, for the Freedom Party tonight, All opposing right. this thing. All right, isn't right. Bobby Kennedy called me uh, this afternoon and got in here, and I told him I heard this thing was going to happen, and he told me that. Uh, he hadn't been consulted about it, but he agreed his law and order ought to be the thing and that they ought to stick with the principle of law and order and that uh, he didn't know what was going to happen. And I said, well, hell, you ought to pitch in and try to tell that damn crowd in New York where you're having a reception that they ought to, they ought to be reasonable about it. And uh, that, that's exactly what he told me. 
Now, all I'm saying, and, I, and you know this, and that is with you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with you as an individual, but I'm not going to sit in a convention up there, and I think the rest of them feel the same way if they're going to uh, start making delegates at large out of uh, this uh, freedom crowd over there, because there ain't any damn way in the world that we can, we can justify that. Uh, all we've done now is uh, uh, put the Negro, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, and a few of them, we've just given in and letting them decide who's going to be the delegates to the Democratic Convention. Joe Rao, hell with Joe Rao. I don't know Joe Rao. I've sat beside him once twice, but I'd damn probably believe he's your friend the way he's acting. Uh, he's opposed to this, uh, Carl. He's opposed to this. This is a pure Johnson move to try, try not to call a roll in that convention. I don't see how it could hurt a human being. Mississippi's got every vote they've got. They didn't allow anybody to go in the primary. They wouldn't allow the Negroes to come into the convention. And we, nevertheless, we're going ahead and seeding them. We, we give them every vote they got. And all we're doing is saying in the protest group, protest of education, protest of housing, which you've already recognized in Georgia and pointed four on it, which we've already, already recognized and put some on it. But they have not put anybody on it. And we're just saying on a national basis, we're going to recognize two of them when we're not going to vote. Well, it's a pure symbolic thing. It well, well, if I could do that and get my job done, it'd be fine. If I were a dictator, I wouldn't even be discussing it, but I can't. And I can't even get them to do it this way, but I can get the bosses to go with me this way, and I may be able to get 1,100 to 900, something like that, assuming I could hold us out. I can't. Why, it's all off again. We just have to go start something else. But it's the damnedest thing I ever saw. We got no votes. We got no disagreement about anything. We got a unanimous platform. But we've got this bunch over there, and I've got to get something that will permit a man like Daly and Wagner and them not to get murdered at home. Well, I know it's important. And they can say, well, God damn it, we recognize this as a symbolic protest, not with Mississippi, but as inadequate education. Inadequate housing, inadequate transportation, discrimination through the years. So we said we'll recognize two of them. Nobody's ever going to call a roll. All it does is just keep from calling that damn roll and dividing it up. Last night we figured out that we might get 900 and they might get 1,100. And I think we did too much. Massachusetts, now you're talking about Bobby, the vote up there was about 48 to 10 against us. New England was 3 to 1 against us. And we just, uh, we just got to find some way to keep them from calling the roll. Now, Rao won't go with us. Rao's down there fighting it. But this fellow, Ullman, that makes up one of their 13, we figured we could knock off him and knock off three or four more, and it wouldn't cost us a thing. Didn't hurt Mississippi. Mississippi's fights won. She comes there with legal delegates. They're recognized. They turn right around and walk out the whole I think, I think probably who? Well, they may do it. May do it if the South's that way. Why, uh, they've won. They've got seated. They've caused more goddamn trouble and done less for it than any two states I ever heard of in my life to the party that they're supposed to like. You know damn well that I care less what happens in Mississippi. Yeah. Of course, frankly, uh, being uh, uh, perfectly candid about it, I don't. I realize that uh, you've got to look after Mal Wagner and some of those big boys, but it's, it's going to cut our throats from ear to ear. And uh, if, if Wagner... Carl, I don't see. What does what do we lose? What does Georgia and Texas lose? Now, I t Georgia and Texas don't I lose to this. We don't you lose to this, Mr. President. We lose all we do then is we turn around and we go ahead. You've got, a, you've got a platform now where the liberals say you've got the strongest damn civil rights plank you ever had, and we say you've got the most modern, and it's working at both ends of the line. But we go back... Well, I don't agree that they say that because they say it's a pallid platform. Well, Seller may do it, but you see the New York Times, they got that tour this morning, pallid platform, and said we don't... Well, I think it's a damn good one, and I think... I do, too. I do, too. I do, too, and I think that to go in there tonight and adopt this resolution, if they if they can, if they they can, can't get a minority report, well, we can kill it without a minority report in that committee, where they can't get a roll call. Now, we'll sail through there like nobody's business. In Mississippi, we can say we seated every damn one of them. We didn't touch their state. We recognized them. We didn't. We, we voted to take every vote they had. We didn't take anything away from them. But we've had a couple of honorary sergeant arms all of our life. We've had a couple of honorary vice presidents. We've had a couple of... A couple of Kentucky colonels uh, all of our life. And we, as a symbolic gesture, are going to say, here's two people now, and you can go and say, by God, that your protest was heard and your protest was recognized. They ought to be members of the Mississippi delegation. 
Can well, you call if I could do it and get by with them, Carl, I would. But what they ought to be now, honestly, between you and me, with their population 50%, they ought to be delegates of the Mississippi group. Not, not unless they're Democrats, Mr. President. I they're Democrats, and by God, they tried to attend the convention, and pistols kept them out. These people went in and begged to go and participate in the convention, and they got half the population, and they won't let them. They lock them out. Well, some of them are registered. Well, that's enough to get two delegates on here. I mean, you recognize them. John Connolly recognized them. I think you've got a good, legitimate case to say that the state of Mississippi wouldn't let a Negro come into their damn convention, and therefore they they violated the law and wouldn't let them vote, wouldn't let them register, intimidate them, and by God, they oughtn't to be seated. I think is a legitimate case to be made there, but I don't want to make it. But I don't see how they could raise hell that they uh, have the cake and eat it too and just say, by God, I'm going to be a dog in the manger. I'm going to have all I got, every vote that the state of Mississippi's got. Then, by God, I'm going to bark if somebody across the hall gets a couple. That ain't going to take a vote away from a human. All it does is just stop the agony and the pain and the bad publicity of three damn days here on television and gets us out of there with a unanimous vote. And I can't see that it costs a man a dime. It's going to cost a hell of a lot down there. Well, if it... Publicity-wise, they're going to say the niggers took over the damn convention. And uh, two niggers can't take over anything, Carl. I, I know they can't take it over, but the fact that they... They can say, you got four. I've been hearing that on the television, but that don't... I pointed them, and they're, they're, they're good, loyal Democrats, and they come within the damn rules. They're not, they don't belong to some damn rump crowd in Georgia who came up there and said, let me in the convention, though. But, Carl, we've been doing that for a good many years, recognizing peculiar problems in the state. I went to Chicago in 1944 with the rump crowd myself. And a delegation... Well, if I could, my friend, I would. Uh, I'd, I, I would do anything I could to even get their support. I haven't got their support, but I've got a man that's supporting them. It's coming off of their list and coming on to ours. I can't satisfy them. But I, the last people I thought that would this object to would be the South, because we're a seat in Mississippi. We're giving them every vote to God. Well, if Mississippi... Uh, she wins. I'll she... tell you this, so, uh, I would do this before, I would, uh, before I'd make that trade with Mississippi. Uh, the only thing that worries me, and this is what I'm, what I'm saying now, if, if this Mississippi delegation is going to stay... Uh, then that may hold, hold the rest of us where we can. Well, you and John get over there and say, now, what else? Why is it going to hurt anybody if you're seated and you got every vote in your delegation seated and every man that you got there that'll take the oath to take the pledge, he's seated. And Mississippi's got a full number. Now, what damn difference does it make to them if we don't take away from any other state but we allot two seats and two badges to two fellows that are symbol of discrimination and housing and education not connected with Mississippi? They say that in the presentation. What? And they've been up here fighting this Aaron Henry. I've heard his name all over the damn uh, news and everything else. And when they see him, they're going to say what I'm concerned about. And maybe we can settle this as a whole down Mississippi regular delegation then saying, well, the hell with that. You've gone ahead then and turned the damn party over to the niggers. And then the rest of the next thing, another southern state gets up and says the same thing. And then we got the whole damn crowd. If we, uh, if we, uh, if we see two of them, Mary, and you did have a roll call, which we hope you don't have, we don't believe you, you'll outvote them two to one in Georgia with your four niggers. We'll outvote them a good many in Texas. And Mississippi will be there to vote them down 40 to one. They're not going to have a vote. It's just a pure, symbolic, pussyfooting thing to try to keep from splitting their party like go what it like to see it split. It's just like the word enforcement. It don't make a damn whether it's administration or enforcement, but they made a big symbol of it. And if I hadn't taken enforcement, they'd run me across the damn water. And it's not going to make, I'm going to handle that myself. And if I'm here to elect it, uh, these delegates are not going to hurt us or hurt me or hurt Georgia or hurt Mississippi. Uh, the Freedom Party is not being seated. What's happening is we're doing four or five things. Number one, we come in.